J.P. Morgan was born on April 17, 1837, in Hartford, Connecticut. His dad had money from his business, so J.P. Morgan never experienced what it is like to be really poor. J.P. Morgan attended English High School in Boston, Massachusetts, but studied in Europe from 1854 to 1857, and then returned to New York to start his financial business. In New York, he worked with the George Peabody Company, where he honed his skills in the financial business. While working, he married Amelia Sturges, the daughter of a wealthy New York businessman, but Amelia died of tuberculosis in 1861. Morgan remarried Frances Louisa Tracy, who is the daughter of a New York lawyer. J.P. Morgan, while in New York, also acted as an agent to his father's firm, and in 1879, Morgan sold a large block of New York Central Stock District to Vanderbilt, which pictured him as a big player on Wall Street. After his father's death in 1893, he took over the firm and pursued his visions. He wanted to unify the electric companies into what we now know as General Electric. He wanted to make uniform and stable rates for all railroads and in turn gain control over the railroad system which he saw as flourishing, and he wanted to take charge of the steel industry. All these happened, but his pursuit of the steel industry was what really made him rich and famous. His friend Carnegie had founded the Carnegie Steel Company, and another man he knew, Gary, had founded Federal Steel Company. In 1900, a man named Schwab became president of the Carnegie Company. Schwab eventually approached Gary with the idea of combining the two companies. With the aid of J.P. Morgan, they bought Carnegie's interest for more than $492 million and put together U.S. Steel. This connected National Steel, National Tube, American Steel and Wire, American Steel Hoop, American Sheet Steel, and American Tin Plate to create U.S. Steel as the first billion-dollar company. J.P. Morgan also created voting trusts whereby voting power of the stock was vested into a small group of trustees. J.P. Morgan was hated by many for having so much wealth and power, but he used his economic wealth and connections to help support the country in times of economic crisis, like in 1907. In 1907, practically overnight, he had 60 investors and fellow bankers investing in the American market, which saved the country from disaster. Although J.P. Morgan did take a healthy cut for himself when doing this, he helped America get back on track. Despite helping the American economy in 1907, Congress still feared that there was too much money invested in trust and J.P. Morgan had too much money, so they investigated. The Congress said that his control over the railroads and the lack of competition among banks for railroad securities as well as other companies, and the potential for J.P. Morgan to abuse his power in eliminating the competition's access to bank credit was unreasonable, dangerous, and a monopoly. Morgan insisted that despite his vast wealth, no one could monopolize credit. In addition, Morgan believed that personal traits, such as high character, justified the great power he had. Aside from being a banker, J.P. Morgan loved knowledge. He donated art objects to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut, from his personal collection, as well as what he had acquired from his expansive wealth. He even donated $2 million to the Red Cross. He served on several boards of academic institutions and received honorary doctorates from half a dozen. He even had his own library and private space in New York. J.P. Morgan passed away on March 31, 1913, but his company still lives on today.